your eyes, look at the fields, the harvest is ripe. Lift up your eyes, here are the tools are sharp. The workers come together. Lift up your eyes, it is harvest time. so much even for another time as the sun goeth down we have an opportunity to hear from you we thank you for your servant that you have sent to us we thank you for your word we thank you for the great things that you are going to do tonight blessed be the name of the Lord our God in Jesus name we do pray and the people said amen Shout to the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Receive your neighbor, appreciate them in the name of the Lord. If you are seated, please do stand up on your feet. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, wow, wow. Those of you that are seated way, way back, come up front. Let's make one fellowship so that we can hear the word of the Lord together. Tonight is our third night, Wednesday and yesterday, Thursday, and today, Friday, uh, is the end of these three-day revival meetings, and I'm sure you have come with a great expectation. If that is so, say amen. Amen. The man of God, Pastor Apostle Alo, has been a great blessing in Grace Hour, and in these last two days, and definitely tonight too. And tonight is not the end. We still have tomorrow. But tomorrow is a special program for the couples in the evening at 6.30. And then Sunday. Wow. So let's put our hands together and receive the servant of God. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Please, we can be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you one more time. For the privilege to share the word of God. We made a few statements yesterday and that I would want us to uh, revisit again tonight uh, so that we can uh, take it to the next level. And some of the statements that came out as we shared, included the fact that uh, God is as great as we allow him to be. Now, that's a very powerful statement. Uh, because a number of times uh, we say, uh, well, the Lord will do it. Uh, God will do it. I'm waiting on the Lord to do it. And the greatest pain 
is when God is waiting on us while we think we are waiting on him. There is an irreversible level of responsibility that we have when we are walking with God. In a number of times, uh, the believers uh, transfer this responsibility to God uh, so that when things don't happen, we have God to blame. God has given us an open check called our faith. As a matter of fact, we looked at unto him that is able to do far much exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we, God does, but we think and ask according to all that is able to do far much exceedingly abundantly above all he can do above all that but we have to ask somebody shout me i have to ask god even helped us when it comes to how to ask and he said when you come to ask of me ask Ask me of the nations. God tried to help us know the kind of a God we are dealing with. And he said when you come to pray, let me help you how to pray. Don't ask for a village as great as the village is. As powerful as the village is, as important as the village is, he said, Ask me of the nations. Put it there, my brother. Ask me of the nations. And I will give you, ask, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. He's trying to waken us up to the fact that we are dealing with the big God. So don't come with small prayers when your God is a big God. Don't pray as if you are going to answer the prayers you are praying. Pray with the confidence that you know who is going to answer. Ask of me and I will give you not just a nation, but the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for you to possess. Change your language when you come to pray. God is saying, I would want to move, but your language is the problem. So let me help your language. Many of us are still in that place of the God of a small thing. Pastor, I have a little bit of a little bit of a But God is helping us that even when you have to pray, change your language. When he advises you to change your language, he is saying that should be able to help you understand the kind of a God that you are dealing with. I will give you the nations. So change your language. In other words, when you pray, change your capacity. Because sometimes many of us pray and we don't have the capacity to handle the answers. We serve a big God. Did you say amen or meh? We serve a big God. <laughs> I tell you never my God is big. My God is big. 
My God is a giant. So, he even helps us that let me change your language. When you pray, see the nations. In other words, what I want to give you should change the way you pray. But many of us, the way we pray, some of us pray like we are pitying the God we are praying to. A number of us pray like we don't want to give him a lot of responsibility. We don't want God to be stressed. I don't want God to be thinking about so many things. So let me ask him about things that are easy for him to do. And then he says, let me change your language when you are dealing with me. Please, when you come, pray. What I want to give you are the nations of the earth. So please, as you come, come with your passport. As you come, come knowing you are dealing with God that is going to deliver to you things that will need millions and millions of dollars to go to the nations of the earth properties to go to the nations of the earth and open hospitals to go to the nations of the earth and do things that will affect the ends of the earth don't deal with an all round God with a local mentality I will give you the nation somebody shout the nations tell your neighbor I'm an international man I know I don't have a passport, but I'm international. I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. What is God saying? I am big. That is just what he's saying. Then the choice is yours. So you can pray like a beggar. You can pray like a man who knows his God. My brother put it there. And this is the confidence that we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will that we have confidence some of us pray to God <laughs> and we don't even have confidence in the God we are praying to we come not very sure we come like, I'm not sure if he'll do it. In case he does it, it's an accident. Don't deal accidentally with the God that has said, come with confidence. God is saying, you can rely on me. God is saying, you can, the, the, the greatest pain that God suffers is the pain of not being trusted. And there are many of us believers that don't trust the God we are talking about. <laughs> Look at this. Now this is the confidence that we have in God. Lift up your hands and say, I have confidence in my God. You are not saying it very well. Say, I have confidence in my God. That what I'm going to ask for tonight... He didn't give it a definition. He said that if we ask for anything, I don't know the definition of anything. Now, can you take one minute and describe anything in your own language? Just one minute. Can you tell God anything that you want God to do? You see, you are still quiet because you don't even understand anything. There are some of us that anything can be school fees, but it cannot be school. Many of us believe that God can provide school fees, but they don't believe that God does not just want to provide school fees. God wants to give you a school. Many of us believe, okay, pastor, God can give me a car that is not a fuel guzzler, but God cannot give me an entire yard so that I don't just have a car. I'm selling cars and giving cars. Tell your neighbor God is big. Stop behaving small. And now you didn't tell him very well. Now that's the wrong neighbor. Look for the right neighbor. Tell him God is too big. Stop acting small. Thinking small. Speaking small. Planning small. 
behaving small, tell him, neighbor, small people do small things, attract small people, die a small death, and leave big problems in a generation. I'm not one of them. Small people are the most dangerous people. Because small people would want you to be small to the extent that if they cannot make another human being small, they make God small. Because they always want someone who will die with them. And small people create big problems. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, according to his will when you are praying don't pray as if god is not hearing god is hearing tell god something worth hearing he already told you tell me about the nations don't come here with a small mind father i've been asking you for these shoes for so long if you cannot give it to me, why don't you touch someone to just give me what he has been wearing? Many of us see God like that. <laughs> Lord, I know you are God, but in this particular situation, if only I have, God doesn't work like that. Don't limit an unlimited God with your limited speech. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Let me show you his will. Brethren, I wish above all things. You know what a will is? A will is a wish, is a dream, is a desire, is a prayer, is a heartbeat, is the ambition of God. Brethren, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. Third John. Is it? Third John. Put it there. I wish above all things. The wish of God is the will of God. So when you go to pray, don't pray as if you are not sure of what God wants for your life. God wishes above all things that us believers may prosper and be in health even as our souls are prospering. So we pray according to God's will. God's will is God's word. The will was ratified when Jesus died and delivered to us. So the will of God is the total conclusion or the total sum of what made Jesus die. That's the will of God. So our prayer should line up with God's will. And this is the confidence. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Give me the thy and thou, the original King James Version. So here he says, I pray. But here he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. That's the will of God. So when I go to pray, I pray knowing God wants me to prosper. When I go to pray, I pray knowing that God wants me to have the good things of life. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And not just some of these things. All these other things will be added to you. That is the will of God. That I should not just even pray for those things. He will add those things to me. So I seek the kingdom of God. And he does the addition. I said one day. That kingdom addiction. Results in material addition. Write that down. So I can't be addicted to God. And be addicted to poverty at the same time. When the kingdom becomes your pursuit. Prosperity becomes your result. When God becomes your focus, 
gold becomes your follower. When God becomes your all, all good things become part of your life. God is so beautiful for you to live an ugly life. You know many of us, there's a way we think, we always think that when you are really suffering and suffering and suffering, then God is very happy you are a good soldier of the cross. It's a mindset that we have. But I read my Bible, it said, and seek ye first. God cannot become your first and you become last. There was a man in the east.